This is the Musilog Magazine podcast with host Sam Archer. Hey, I'm Sam Archer, your host from the Musilog Magazine podcast. And today we got a special guest. His name is Mr. David Ruffin Jr. And he's here to hang out with us today. Mr. Ruffin Jr., how are you today? Blessed. I am blessed and highly flavored in some cities, or so I've heard. Thank you for asking. <laughs> well, it's how a privilege. You, I'm sorry. It's a privilege to have you here. And um, we're all excited. We're all, well, I don't have a big... I don't have a big staff here, but um, whoever the we are, I just said we. We are. <laughs> I'm excited <laughs> to have you on here. And um, so let's start. Let's start from the beginning. Where do you hail from, uh, and how you got started in music? I am born and raised, <clears throat> uh, actual Motown baby. Ah, uh, okay. I grew up in Detroit. I was born in Detroit, uh, Hutzel Hospital. Uh, mm -hmm. 1966. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, in the in the in the time during the flower child revolution. Yeah, yeah. Peace and love. Peace and love. Yeah. Yeah. I got my music start. Um, it's weird, okay, because of course I was born into it, but mm -hmm. uh, I think I decided the first time I decided that I liked music and or had some sort of affection for it mm -hmm. i might have been 12 okay. and uh my father gave me an old tower of remember those remember those entertainment centers that were a square box and you had two cassette tapes on the bottom and you had a radio in the middle and you had a record player on the top that's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> that, that's where I got my start. Um, okay. Doing doing mixtapes with mm. cassette tapes. That's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. And my friends that were DJs spinning house music, most of them, mm -hmm. uh, I let them hear a couple of them, and they were like, man, this almost sounds like a record, a mm -hmm. record mixing, and you should try the turntables. And... So I tried the turntables, and then that was my real first introduction to any type of production okay. in audible music. All right, all right, that's that's a good start. And now, now, who are some of your uh, influences that you can talk about? Um, I signed NDAs with all of them, so I can't. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> that was funny, though. That was a good one. I would say uh, my first real, by I didn't realize he was an influence until later, but I guess it would it would have to be Marvin Gaye first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, second, see that's that's illegal. That's <laughs> not supposed to happen. I know we we go we go we go edit that out. <laughs> you said we, so now I'm talking to the production manager over there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Make sure the production manager knows that the people on set have to have the ringers down. How about that? Oh, uh, okay, maybe, yeah, right, yeah, yes. Maybe maybe I should do the same. Um, <laughs> but my 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 second influence was probably. Alexander O'Neill at the same time, James D. Train Williams. Wow. Okay. Then followed by Luther Vandross. Okay. Then revisited or reestablished a connection to being influenced by my father. Mm, okay. But he was not first. Okay. Uh, his influence came well after I had become a singer. Okay. Okay. I mean, not not to pry I mean, too much, but was there like a particular reason why, you know, I didn't expect him to be first per se, but you you actually mentioned it, so I'm like, okay, if you're mentioning it, means that, you know, I knew he would be in the mix, but um, what what was there anything like that sort of held you back from actually 
if you would have asked me this question 10, 15 years ago, he wouldn't have been in the mix because mm. I was intimidated by most of what he did. And mm. I felt that the closer I got to it, the more he and mm -hmm. others after him would expect from me. Mm. Mm. And that was just too large. Of yeah, a those issues are heavy to fill. So yeah. uh, I would say, though, around 90, around 99, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the pressure, for lack of better words, mm. to become more like my father audibly uh, was very thick, not only from uh, his fans, mm -hmm. but from the entities and or establishments and or record labels, production companies and individuals that wanted me to give them that mm. um, and I was really stuck on no I'm making my own lane thanks which at the time was a cover was a shield was a mask to keep me from having to deal with it but I think over time I, I became um, displeased with the display of of talent that was mimicking and or even responsible for singing my father's songs. Mm. So eventually a light switched in, uh, clicked on, and eventually uh, the torch that I wasn't picking up wound up in my hand. Mm. Mm. And I started taking some very calculated intentional steps to learning not only more of my father's music, but how he emoted it. Mm. I've always had my own grit and grime, but I didn't have a lot of what I would consider now, I didn't have a lot of the passion. I didn't have a lot of the pain mm. that my father had experienced. And guess what? As an adult, mm -hmm those pains that especially don't go away over time are magnified. And so I had to address them and I had to deal with them. And in doing so, it allowed me a place of freedom and even comfort to go ahead and attach myself harder and stronger and with more longevity to the lineage and bloodline of what rough, rough and represents to history, not just music history. Yeah. And that's something to be proud of. And in spite of my fears and in spite of my insecurities, I moved forward and have, have done so since and will continue to do so. However, mm -hmm. it's very important to mention that I have not abandoned myself. I still make the music that I want to make. Mm -hmm. I still release the music that I want to release. And in some of that music, you'll hear and or find real rough and DNA. Not by design, uh, but by accident. And I'm glad that I didn't, I'm glad that I didn't try to adopt that responsibility before I had tried to adopt that responsibility because I think life hadn't given me enough tools to deal with it or work it out just yet. It, it was something that that you had to work out over time, and 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 um, it, it's interesting. The 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 children of um, really great people and talented people, they 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 sometimes have a little challenge finding their own identity. You know, so um, you see it Not with them. Sometimes. You see it with um, I, I've seen it with a lot of different people where they sometimes they'll even, you know, not use the last name just to feel like they're getting a fair shot at it. And then eventually they sort of find a little, you know, like a resting moment where they can say, you know what, I'll, okay, let me, I'll, I'll accept it and so on. So, but that, that's commendable though. That's, that's really commendable to, to hear that. 
So let, let's talk about stepping into the entertainment industry. Uh, when did you decide, yo, I'm going to put this out? Like the, the very first thing, what, how, how long, you know, how, how recent or how, how far back uh, do we have to go for something that you actually released into the market? Well, the first thing that I released to the public um, exclusively as myself would have been 2005, okay. I, believe, I believe it was 2005, and that would have been a, an EP entitled the demonstration and the first four letters of demonstration d-e-m-o were capitalized as in my demo as your demo okay and um i didn't release um anything under my own name or brand prior to that but you have heard my voice and you have heard my lyrics that I've written over time, mm -hmm. most of which have been West Coast artists, even though I'm from Detroit. Okay. Uh, okay. The reason the reason being is I uh, took a trip here uh, to to Los Angeles uh, a year about a year after my father passed. Okay. And three weeks into my trip here, I was in the studio with. Dr. Dre, Warren G, DOC, and Snoop Dogg. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, a, a couple months later, uh, Dr. Dre and I were riding down the 101 headed to the studio, and a song came on the radio by Slave called uh, Watching Ladies. No, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, walking down the street, watching ladies. Go by watching you. Mm -hmm. You know that song? Yeah, I know that record. <laughs> so my father always had me as a child change the lyrics up to songs because he felt that some of the songs that I was singing, which he was listening to in the car or at the house, were inappropriate for me to be regurgitating, even in the midst of the passion behind the song. Mm -hmm. So he taught me to and insisted that I change lyrics to words mm -hmm. to make them more suitable for children. So I did that. So in the process of my lifetime, I've done that. It's very easy for me to change lyrics to some melody that I'm hearing or that I've been affected by in my past or in history in general uh, or for my music playlist. But this particular song came on the radio and Dre and I were in a 300 convertible, beautiful day, song came on. I was singing the song and I was changing the lyrics and I said, rolling down the street, uh, I said, exactly, smoking chronic, sipping on gin and sako. Now, gin and, gin and sako was something I had just been introduced to that week. So it's very, very, very relevant and very, very, very recent in my, oh, wow, this stuff's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and because I'd come from Detroit and had been what they called smoking weed that was from Mexico or Arizona, this, this marijuana in California was substantially better. And I found out and again was like, oh my God, I got to write home about this. <laughs> so when I said those lyrics, I said to him, I asked him, I asked Dre while we were driving, what is Saka? Because I had just recently tried it. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, just juice. Really? It's just basically tang or some watered down orange juice. And I was like, oh, so it's juice. So I could just say juice. Mm. And he was like, yeah. And then I asked him what type of weed is chronic. And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, aren't there strains to it? I, I know now, but I didn't know then. Mm -hmm. Aren't there different types, like types that do this or types that do that? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time, there was, uh, I guess, only two. Indica and sativa sativa was a brain high and indica was a body high and mm. i had smoked a body high that i had never tried in my life so i was really like blown away 
I changed the song, the, the song idea from Chronic. I asked him about which was which, and he said in, uh, Indica. And I said, oh, that's where the word Indo comes from. And Indo, I had learned from uh, the Chronic album. Okay. On my, on, on, before I left Detroit and on the whole drive across the United States, all I listened to basically was that record. Okay. Okay. And so I changed the song from rolling down the street, smoking chronic, sipping on gin and sake, because it really didn't blend. Mm -hmm. I was looking for another one. To in Indo and Juice. Got okay. to the studio in about 20, 30 minutes from there. He turned off the radio and was like, don't forget that. Keep going. Keep saying it. And I kept saying it. We got to the studio. We busted down the door. It was like eight, nine people in there waiting for us, ready to do something that we already had planned to do. And Dre was like, nope, everybody out. Move it. And I would say uh, within five minutes, he had dug in the crates, found the record, and had it sampled. Within 15 minutes, he had a blueprint, a skeleton of a track. Mm. But the part for the hook, he was focused on and had enough of it down and was like, okay, d Ruff, get in the booth, let's go. <laughs> Put it down. And I went into the booth and I mean, I tell you, it was three takes. Wow. And there's only two stacks on that. Uh, well. So within... Two days, that song was finished. Wow, wow! I like that. That's that's. Uh, I I wasn't expecting to get get uh, this type of uh, story. Body blow three D interview, but this is great. This is great. Right. This is great. I do what I can. I do what um, I can. Learn about the ever changing climate of the music industry, and learn how to position yourself. With the new book, Hybrid Executive, great for indiepreneurs, indie artists, managers, engineers, booking agents, and more. Hybrid Executive is the new terminology for today's indie artist, written by music producer Samuel E. Archer. Now available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Apple Books, Book Baby, and other leading ebook distributors. Visit thehybridexecutive.com for more information. And not to dabble in too much to, to, um, because I want, you know, it's your interview, but what was it like being in the atmosphere of the, of the likes of a, of a Dr. Dre? What, what, what was that like? Just, you know, it's wild because what wound up happening, uh, is we, we, we developed a full blown friendship. And, uh, at some point where I was living, uh, he offered, uh, I had to move out and he had just had his house uh, restored. It caught fire and he was moving back in and he had been in there a week and he said, Hey, you know, I just moved back into the house. I'm the only one there. You need a place. There's plenty of bedrooms. Have your, sh have your choice. Mm -hmm. So uh, I took him up on it and I wound up staying there for like eight months mm -hmm. and uh, I got to know him very well and mm -hmm. it was crazy to find out how similar we were and how you know I can't call him a yes I can because I'm one too he's he's kind of a nerd okay he's a little bit of a nerd to be honest and I mean he you know he might admit that to his circle of closest friends but I'm sure he wouldn't say that out loud and I'm not saying it as shade I'm actually saying it to uh, uh, humanize him a little bit. Yeah. Um, he was uh, a funny dude. He still is. I mean, I guess. I mean, we haven't spoken in a long time. Mm -hmm. But while we were creating music and traveling and doing performances, it was really cool to know him. It was really a, a, an amazing experience. And um, sadly, the only reason that we're not friends, I think, is because of business. And I'm not sure that it was his business that actually dissolved our our friendship. Uh, I think more so it was Marion. Uh, however, at the time when it all happened, when I had to take death row to court, mm -hmm. 
as far as I was concerned, everybody was pigeonholed and everybody was in that bucket. Um, unfortunately, we haven't had an opportunity to speak, but I feel like I know I've evolved. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I would suspect he has as well. Um, he is recently out his, of his uh, marriage and he seems to be a lot more social and a lot more outgoing than he was. Hey, Will, take Dre's advice and um, just get on out of there and you won't have to act like a crazy white boy no more. <laughs> anyway. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was from Will Smith. Anyway. I know, um, I know, I know. I know. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it moving. That was, I, that was like, wow. <laughs> jab, jab. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I, I, I suspect, you know, the universe does what it wants to do, everything in divine timing. So mm -hmm. I suspect that we'll cross paths at some some point uh, in life again, especially as of late with the traction that I'm getting uh, mm -hmm. with my music and okay. uh, okay. with these show dates, uh, I'm getting out more. I'm not really that Hollywood of a guy. Mm -hmm. I prefer to be home. I'm a cancer, although my 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 home is on my back. I enjoy the how the home life. So mm -hmm. I, I mean the red carpet stuff and the and the events and the you know uh, uh, step and repeats. They don't mean anything to me anymore. I mean my father's David Ruffin. I grew up in it. I've seen the top and the bottom. So I mean I'm not necessarily moved. If I'm invited somewhere, I'll probably go. But I don't just pop up at events just to hobnob and get into people's business because I don't like it. But I think that at some point in time, just like uh, the situation with other artists, including Snoop, I think, you know, um, our paths will cross because I'm I'm in route to more greatness as they are. And those roads do seem to uh, end up merging at some point or at least crossing paths. Mm -hmm. And I think you, I think, you, you know, in a way you guys are like would be family still, you know, regardless of the circumstances around it so i'm, I'm yeah, sure it wasn't it wasn't just i came in to do a session every now and then i mean we've all slept in the same vehicles we've all passed out on the same floors we've all spent the nights and nights and weeks in studios together mm -hmm. we've broken bread together you That's know so uh i he's 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 probably uh 10 years younger than me so i, I kind of get it at the time the demographic the way he might have seen and looked up to dre at and or as an elder, he might have considered me that as well, but didn't necessarily want to. And that's fine. Okay. I've okay. always been. So, so let's talk about uh, your journey in terms of the music that you're doing right now. Um, you said to me that right now you're dropping uh, Time of My Life, which is your single that's out now. Um, you had dropped a single before, which was uh, Cry. Cry, Cry, Cry. Cry, 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 and then you have some other music coming up. So, so let's talk about this new part of your journey. When, when did you start this part of the journey, and what can fans look out for from you? So, in 2010, I was with a label uh, called Win Win Global, and I was working on a project as well as uh, mentoring and A and Ring for other artists on the label writer as well mm -hmm. we had six artists and and i wanted to be in, a, in an executive place at the time so i helped run the label uh when when finances financial our 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 backer backed out and it ended up being the ceo and myself and compound and no artists and uh so we started, we, we, we initially, we initiated going ahead and, and revisiting the songs that I already recorded and work on an album. I don't know, something happened to him emotionally and he got disconnected from it and he basically defunct the whole company and I had put everything that I had into it. So I had to re had to I had to reevaluate what I was doing. I took a hiatus mm -hmm. for a couple years, and then uh, a friend of mine 
gave me a Mac Mini. Okay. With, with some That's software. Unit. Okay. With some softwares on it that I hadn't had since I don't know, ninety five, which was since, since the Dre days. <laughs> yeah. Right. So, um, I started teaching myself. Uh, more of the Pro Tools, and I started teaching myself Logic for the first time. Okay. And it heightened my uh, interest and awareness that I could probably record myself if I, you know, wanted to. So I would say over the last, over the next 10 years, I learned how to record myself. Uh, I learned how to make music. Um, I learned how to edit, um, and in that time, I probably made 200 songs. Ooh. Uh, I put out records from that one, that first EP of mine. Mm -hmm. Um, I've put out singles. I've put out, uh, on other projects and because of the lack of monetary power to promote these songs, I didn't have 40, 50 grand to even do a small promotion. So you make this music and you put it out and you see what happens initially with like Napster and all, people are just taking your music. Yeah. Now with the streaming platforms, you make 0.2 or 0.7% of a cent <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, I mean, if you get 10,000 streams in a year, you might see $17, $20, 30 if you're lucky, maybe 100 So it became like I'm making this music and I'm putting it out and I'm expecting things. And the more, the easier it's gotten for just anybody to put out a record, the more in the cracks I've slipped, regardless of my lineage, regardless of my bloodline. Mm. There's people out there with way more money to make themselves way more visible and way more uh, 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 tangible. Over the years, it was just like, ah, I'll make the music, I'll put it out, ah, just so people know that I'm still making music. But it hasn't been exciting. Now, I'm, you know, minus the gray beard in numbers, I'm 55 years old. But Welcome to the club. But hey, double nickel. You got me by three years. <laughs> you got me by three. But double nickel. I'm proud um, of mine. I got, I got it going too. Don't worry. <laughs> We're in there. <laughs> um. Uh. But um. Uh. What was my point? Um. You. We. We. We're getting old. You had. You just had a senior moment. That's all right. We. we yeah. <laughs> We'll work it out. It's okay. <laughs> um, I was just saying that um, I forgot what I was saying. Uh, you you were talking in terms of what's happening with the music now and and what you were doing in terms of just putting out the music, but the re the returns from the yeah, streaming. Yeah, that part. Has, that part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That part. So, um, as of recently, I think it was COVID. I would have to say, to be fair, that it was COVID. Mm -hmm. That had me in the house even more than I wanted to be. Now, I don't mind being home. Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, a friend of mine went through some stuff. He needed a place. So I let him come. I was just been in this two bedroom by myself. Let my roommate, my, my current roommate, who was just my friend at the time, he needed a place. Then my son, a year ago, his situation went left and he's. I don't know, six Man. foot 13, I like to say. Oh, wow. Just a, he just takes up a lot of space. It's just a lot. <laughs> he's like. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's not this tall or this tall. He's like. Whoosh. Yeah, yeah he's, a... <laughs> he's a big dude. And so, uh, you know, uh, I had all this energy around me. And I was like, you know, I'm going to make some music. And I started going into my hard drive and looking for instrumentals that I've liked over the years and looking for songs that were that I tried to do were incomplete. 
and uh, sat here at this desk right here mm -hmm. and opened up my logic and started hashing and bashing and crashing to make some music and bringing in some instrumentals and getting a really good mic. I see. Oh. I see the mic. Yeah, I got a Sterling here. Okay. Oh, the no. mic. Uh, the the mic wears a T-shirt. I see. Okay. Oh yeah, you got to keep the dust off. I, I know. I know. <laughs> I had a uh, client here once. I had a client here once, and I keep I keep a beanie on on the mic. So so it was during the winter, right? And he's like he's like Sam. Is your mic cold? <laughs> 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 but anyway, we'll go. I'm sorry. That, it was just funny. But, 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 is it cold in here or is it me? <laughs> or is it the mic? Yeah, the mic. <laughs> but, but, but yeah, so, I, I got to cover my mic too. So, yes. It's, it's, but it's yeah, fun. so, um, you know, because of COVID and I wasn't going out, a lot of the people who that I would see on a regular basis were coming through. And, mm. you know, what are you doing with the music, David? Blah, 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 blah. Well, let me let you hear it. And I started playing music and I've been playing music for people who would come by. A couple people over the phone, like, what is that? I'm hearing in the background and I let them hear it. And I just got too many folks telling me, what are you doing? Like, mm. why are you doing this? You know, there are people out here who want to know what mm. this sounds like and what you bring to the table. And because I was over the whole, uh, if it don't sound like David Ruffin, they don't want to hear it. I was over that. Mm -hmm. I was over that. I believe in my own. Number one thing I believe in is my writing skills. I'm not a singer. I'm not a singer, but I can emote and I can, I can, I can, I can display passion and um, I can help you think and I can help you feel just with words. I've been fortunate enough to be able to learn how to make a couple people feel something with the tone that comes with those words as well. Um, so I guess it has been the village that has pushed me. I mean, because although I haven't put out music and I haven't been what I would consider a success and I haven't been what uh, 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 others would consider David Ruffin pl Plateau, I'm cool in my skin. Mm -hmm. I'm comfortable in who I am. Yeah, and you have to be. You have to be. Yeah. Well, you do have to be, but there's more than half of us on this planet that are not. More than half. More than half of us are not comfortable in our skin. I'm sure of that. I don't even need a statistic or doc Dr. Fauci or anybody else to tell me that, Dr. J and nobody. But I've gotten comfortable in my skin. I think it has something to do with the amount of years I've lived um, because I know this adult thing is overrated for most of us, um, even those that consider themselves successful, you know, mm -hmm. the responsibility and or burdens that they hold can make them, you know, almost abandon that childlike, jovial energy. I couldn't possibly. I couldn't possibly. And had I bitten off more than I could chew before I was able to chew it, I probably wouldn't be prepared or willing to do what I'm doing now. So this music that's coming out next, this next music of mine, I'm going to actually, for the first time in my life, release a whole album. To the extent of it might even be a double. Okay, bring it on. Bring it on. I've got enough music. I've got enough music to do that. Bring it on, man. Bring it on. So Come check me out, chriskeys.com. I'm worldwide. Tony El Tamarano. Yeah. Hi, I'm Gina. What's up, everybody? I'm Win Vu, award winning remixer. Oh, yeah, I'm an artist. Yeah. Hi, my name's Justina Bethel. Hi, I'm Mike Bowen from Denton, Texas. How you doing? This is Tom Cut from Music by Tom Cut. Check out Samuel E. Archer's book, Hybrid Executive. We are in the business, and here's how you can be a better business person because you're running your business. Um, you can find my music at JustinaBeth underscore EL on Instagram or JustinaBethel.com, and I am a hybrid executive. I am a hybrid executive. I'm a hybrid executive just like you. Follow me at Koya Music, and I'm also a hybrid executive. I'm worldwide, baby, but just know I'm a hybrid executive. That's all you need to know, baby. Get on up, B. Check out my music, MikeBowen.com. I'm a hybrid executive. I'm a hybrid executive. 
So, so um, this is really, really good, man. I, I, you know, and shout out to to Bree. Uh, I knew this was going to be a special interview, but this has been really, really inspirational. Just you know, the, the, the thirty minutes we're here. Um, what's next? Well, you you actually spoke about what's next in terms of putting out the music. But, but, but what do you got what do you have coming up that folks can look out for that they can visit the website and you know see what you're doing and you know talk about that a little bit well um what's next is i have always wanted to be an actor and because i've gone through so much of life being ready staying ready for someone's eye to catch me staying ready for someone's camera to catch me staying ready to be on someone's stage or to do an interview or to be on a television uh, or on the news i'm wanted to be on the other side of the camera and so i'm in a movie okay uh the bridget harris story i'm playing one of her two attorneys mm -hmm. Uh, that started filming in December. Um, and there's been a hiatus because the uh, director has gone through some things, uh, some family issues, lost a loved one. Okay. It's trying to regroup and we're picking up shooting again here this month. That's really going to be an interesting thing. If you don't know who Bridget Harris is, just do a Google. It's a young lady, young black lady who was, um, being sexually abused throughout her life mm -hmm. and one day decided might have been a bad decision, but uh, in the, in the, in the heat of of the years, she uh, she dismembered her father's uh, business uh, while he was asleep, and wow. Wow. ran out the door with it and threw it in the ocean. It was never it was never found. Uh, he didn't die immediately, but I guess over. Uh, Sorry to laugh. I'm, I mean, I <laughs> the way you said it was never found. <laughs> I'm like, imagine it was a search party. You know? <laughs> Literally. Oh no, there it is. <laughs> um, but but um, yes. But so yeah, I'm um, I'm playing uh, her attorney in that, and I'm looking for more speaking parts. Uh, anybody out there watching that would, would like a, a, a guy that can play different types of characters i'm i'm available uh, i'll do okay. a read i'll okay, do a read no problem universe. um my my website david ruffin jr.com is uh recently been rehashed and it looks uh nice a lot more sleek and moves a lot better it doesn't it's not overloaded like it was okay um, i have music there that i've released prior to my two newest releases and a lot of more information about me there will also be uh, uh, an events page, it's still kind of in the works, but it, it is something to be uh, appreciated and learned from at this point. So please do visit um, my Instagram, David Ruffin Jr., my Facebook, David Ruffin Jr., my Twitter, David Ruffin Jr. I also was three weeks ago on Fox Network on a television show that is a spinoff of The Masked Singer. It's called I Can See Your Voice. Okay, hosted, I, think I, I think I remember that show. The Master it's Center. hosted by uh, the same Dr. Ken Jong that hosts I Can See Your Voice. Okay. Um, I did a lip sync and I did a live performance. I was hoping to win the show. I didn't win the show, but what I did win was I stole that episode. I'm wasn't the guy that made it to the last as one of the secret voices. Mm -hmm. One, I'm glad that the young lady who was playing, there aren't a lot of people that win, but the young lady that was playing as a contestant, she actually won the 100,000. Okay. I was really glad to be a part of that. Okay. Because I know, I don't know, but I can imagine what $100,000 can do to change someone's life in an instant. <laughs> well, we even can after, imagine. <laughs> even after the taxes and it wind up being sixty or 70000 it's still... It's, it's, it's a, a beautiful thing. It's definitely a beautiful thing. I'm actually really excited because the part of the show where I was eliminated was the part of the show where I shined the most. Ooh. The first performance was My Girl. I did my father's music and they told the people in the show, the judges who are trying to convince the contestant that 
yeah, he might be David from Sun, or he might not be. And yeah, he might be a car salesman, but I don't think he can sing. So the young lady said that I was the voice that couldn't sing. And on the on the exposition song, the song where you're eliminated or you win as a secret voice, I sang Hold On. And it was live. And when I left the production, I wasn't sure how it was going to look. Mm -hmm. I wasn't super confident that I was going to be in a good light. But once I saw the show three weeks ago, mm -hmm. I realized that me not winning had zero effect on what could come from me participating in the show, either negatively or otherwise. I'm happy with what it looked like. I'm happy how I represented and I'm proud to say David Ruffin and I'm proud to say David Ruffin Jr. And mm -hmm. uh, there's more coming. I have more coming. Um, not saying offhand that I have nailed down a television show or not, but the energies are in my favor. The universe has been speaking yeah. to me a lot. And the, 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 the timing that is divine is also doesn't apparently need to be uh, wound or solar powered it's just going and i'm grateful i'm happy that god has put certain people in my path at this point in my life mm -hmm. to make things flow like the water amen. that a cancer sign flows best in amen 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 so, so So, so before we go, um, there are three questions I normally ask the artists. Uh, some people feel it's a little bit invasive. Some people feel violated sometimes, but you know, I, I think it's cool questions. Um, so are you game for these questions? Are you, he said, bring it on. <laughs> and, and actually what I just said was really the bark. It, it's, it's not that deep. I just ask, uh, what's your favorite color? Orange, preferably a darker color orange. Uh, here, here, where's my wallet? Is it in my pocket? It's in my pocket. My wallet. Mm -hmm. This isn't the orange, but I like orange. Okay, okay. So, That's so you like earth, you like earth tones, like more I like, like 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 Egypt, Egyptian type uh, colors. Okay, okay. I, I don't like red, but I love burgundy. <laughs> okay. Um, when David Ruffin Jr. is in the kitchen to throw down, what does he like to prepare? Wings. Ah. <laughs> okay, that's not a throw down. That's just I love <laughs> wings. But if I was going to throw down... Uh -huh. um, Uh, I make a really good chili. Hmm, okay. All right. So the ladies are listening. He, he makes a good chili. Um, and, and, and anyone who's hungry, I guess you can get some chili and, and some wings. You know? <laughs> right. All right. And your third question? And, and my third question is, who are you listening to in your player right now? I, I normally say MP3 player, but... But saying MP3 you're telling your age, right you're now, telling your age with that one. Yeah, it sounds like saying what cassette? What you got on your cassette right now? So, 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 what do you have in your mobile device right now that you're listening to? Like at least three people. Before I answer what I'm listening to, you should go ahead and say permanently what is on your cassette player. You should. <laughs> you should. I'm going to use that on the next one. <laughs> um, all right, like uh, honestly. Um. Uh, mm -hmm. 
I'm, I listen to. Wow. Coffee is in my, I guess, coffee right now, I would say. She's a young uh, Caribbean artist. I know coffee, yes, uh, from Jamaica. Yeah. Uh, true them. Want to say about Bob Rocks or Below Rock? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I would say um, I'm always a fan of anything India Ari puts out. Mm. I am a fan of Bruno Mars. I am a fan of Anderson Park. I am a fan of J. Cole. Um, okay. I, I am a fan of of Fantasia. I am a fan of currently. I uh, I don't like his content, but I do like. That's your phone. Yeah, um, that's me. That's me. I'm, I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't. Okay, I'll just restart that. I. Don't want to say, I want to say Chris Chris Brown, but I don't like his content. But I like his voice. I like his tones. Okay, I like a lot of his transitions. He doesn't seem to overrun songs like eighty percent of what of of what they call themselves R and B artists are overrunning. And mm. for me, people who overrun can't sustain notes. Mm. And because I come from that old school of a, of, a, of, a, of a demographic, it's important for me. People have even con, con, uh, convinced themselves that if you can do runs, you're a better singer than one that can't. I totally disagree. For me, a person who uh, does a run has a problem keeping that note where it is, which is why they drop or they go up because they can't lock it. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. When these singers start sustaining notes, and 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 showing me vibratos that don't wave like this, and they just wave like this. Mm -hmm. uh, Wanye, he's the start of that, and it was fine for just him. And I love what he did, but I felt like it was just him. And he found a way to make himself not stick out in a negative fashion mm -hmm. with those runs. But the sad thing is that everybody today has taken the runs out of context yeah. Uh, yeah and and i know that for the most part those runs were to glorify gospel mm -hmm. for me that's where those runs came from and that's where they basically stayed mm -hmm. i don't mind bringing any part of music into what is current or into what you're creating mm -hmm. but to make that the primary i'm just not i'm just not a fan of people who don't know how to sustain a note mm. beyonce does there are a lot of artists that can mm -hmm. but, but there aren't a lot of male vocals today vocalists that i see doing that and that's what i do and it's not because i'm doing it because they don't it's a part of it's part of me it's part of the drj of david ruffin jr amen so more than anything that i'm listening to today and over the last two years and it's not to be narcissistic in any way and i somebody could go ahead and manipulate this if they want to i don't care but myself i've been listening to myself i've been listening to a lot of instrumental artists a lot of cat producers that make just tracks not beats tracks Mm. With real changes and real uh, progression and a real bridge and a real intro and a real vamp and a real outro. And uh, I'm, 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 I listen for tracks. I'm not a, I, don't, I don't do too much with beats anymore. However, because I do hip hop, country, classical, whatever you want, I listen to all types of tracks and some beats depending on who wants what. There are people who hit me up and like, can you put a hook on this? I've got to feel the music. You almost can't pay me enough mm. to 
put my voice on your song, whether it's got vocals on it or not, whether it's uh, instrumental or whether it's a rap song with no hook, if you're not saying something that's solid, if you're not saying something that someone can learn something from, mm -hmm. if you're just saying the same old, same old, if you're just running the same old garbage into our ears like the government does into our ears, I'm not with it. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. If it wasn't for this movie making the temptation movie making my father to be the villain of the film if it wasn't for that i probably wouldn't have to downgrade or undo some of the work but mm -hmm. there are people out here that are glorifying david ruffin for all the wrong reasons and mm -hmm. i want to make sure that the music that i do doesn't feed into that mm -hmm. okay okay well I, that's well very well said <laughs> very well said man Mr. Ruffin Jr., this this has been uh, this I I I think I've done my job today, and I got a lot more to do. But this this has been inspirational. It was a pleasure chopping it up with you. Um, this this was lovely, lovely, and um, thank you for your time. Much success on the music that you're going to be putting out. I know my fan base and the folks that follow uh, musilog.com and all the other platforms, um, they would really, really enjoy this interview. This was really, really, this was powerful. So thank you for your time. And uh, and we will certainly be in touch. And don't be a stranger. Anytime you got something you got to put out, make sure you send me, uh, send something to musilog.com and I'll get it on, I'll get it on the um, publication for you. It'll be okay. Uh, I'd just like to say um, to uh, your followers and your listeners, thank you for chiming in. Thank mm -hmm. you for any of your support. I would like you to go out and uh, listen for some of the music that I've put out mm -hmm. as of most recently, uh, Cry, 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 which looks a little bit like this. Okay. Okay. And Time of My Life, which looks a little bit like this. Bring it in a little bit more to the to your left and up up. I'm trying okay. to keep the glare. I'm trying to keep the glare off. Oh yes. Okay, we see it. We see it. And you you actually did see these? Like <laughs> you are not playing. <laughs> no, I'm not. Not at all. That's what's up. That's what's up. So. Stay in touch. Keep me Thank posted. You. You, if you got a press release, a fly, whatever, we, I'll get it up there for you. Um, and let, let's keep this going. Let me ask you one question before you go. Okay. Between the two songs, which one is your best, your favorite? Uh, that's a good question because uh, I think I tuned, I think I listened to one yesterday on um, Apple, but I, I'll have to listen to it. Uh Wow, you caught me off guard there. I'm so I'm so sorry. Just instinctively, <laughs> instinctively, right now, your favorite is. Uh, I will go with "Time of My Life." How was that? See, that's not what you said before we started recording. <laughs> 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 but but I know why you did that, and that is in support of me, and I appreciate that. I love <laughs> you, brother. Iron sharpens iron. Definitely. Stay positive, stay strong. It's been marvelous, splendid, and wonderful to be here with you today, and I look forward to us doing this again. Amen, amen. Thank you. You're welcome. My man. All right. Pound. <laughs> oh, I, I, I got to put it up. <laughs> Be sure to visit our website, musilog.com. M U Z I L O G, musilog.com, where music, entertainment, and culture lives.